Hello, welcome to part three. It's just after midnight and I have just won bobbin chicken against an alpaca. Now it's time for entirely hinged footage. <laughs> yeah, part one and two was kind of too normal, so I'm just trying to get weirder from here. Um, yeah, this is my super fat bobbin of alpaca. Look at me at noon. In fact, look at it, look at it right here because I'm editing the, the video for part two. Um, me, at, me at noon going like, yeah, this alpaca project will, will keep, will just keep me going the whole time. Just, I'll, I'll get to the end of Tour de Fleece with it. Didn't even get to the end of the freaking day. Um, also, my friend was here, and like, I really wanted to spin on the ice bin, but that's really noisy because it's the sewing machine. So, um, I had to pick up a spindle and I picked out some fiber, and I'll show it properly in the light. It's part of my friend's. Um, birthday fibre that because I took some out for myself and like she doesn't care but it does feel quite naughty and I'm spinning it before it's her birthday before I'm even giving it to her so it's like bonus double naughty this is my naughty antisocial spindle yarn um, yeah I'll burn some later because I don't know what it is and it's not labelled and I thought there was a label but it was just a raffle ticket so I have no idea Wait, was it one in a raffle? Did you go to a raffle? Did a raffle? I don't know. It's too late at night. <laughs> Welcome to part three. <laughs> the part where we go to hell. <sighs> okay, so part three of Tour de Fleece is apparently one I'm going to get really, really weird. And uh, I think we all just need to accept that. And if you don't like it, I'm sure there's something else you can watch online. <laughs> um, so I, the other day... Um, got fed by the YouTube algorithm Etienne's channel um, and he's somebody that's also a, a fan of mine Walden and apparently their friends so um, I think that's possibly why I ended up with that and the, also the Tour de Fleece stuff that I'm I'm posting and watching and things like that so uh, yeah and while I was watching that because I finished the alpaca last night which I unhinged posted about after midnight I, uh, I've washed it as well so that's like sat drying um, Etienne reminded me of Chien Gora, which is dog fur. And I remembered that I have some of my aunt's dog fur. Uh, so I was thinking about that, and apparently in some kind of fugue state, I came down this morning, I'd, I'd woken up a little bit earlier than I normally do, but was in this, just in the mood to come downstairs and, and spin yarn. And uh, so just without there's no footage of it because I didn't even get dressed or have a drink or do anything other than let my open the doors so my dog could come in and out um and I I spun up a, a bobbin of Shiengora just in this fugue state and I did another one <laughs> so um, I spun up these two singles this morning just with no break uh I'm quite satisfied to see how well they they fit together with their little uh curves so that's fun. Um, I spun up a fat one, then I spun up an even fatter one. Uh, this is St Bernard fur. I'm going to message my aunt and hopefully she um, is okay to share and, and gets back to me within um, the time for editing and stuff. So uh, if she does, I'll insert a little clip of her St Bernard after after this chatty bit. Um, but yeah, this is this is from Sonny. He's a St Bernard. Um, for those of you who don't know, St Bernard's are absolutely freaking massive. Um, <laughs> dogs exist on a really wide spectrum and uh, I have a 2.5 kilo chihuahua who is at one end and Sunny is 70 kilos. <laughs> He's completely at the other end, which is uh, heavier than me holding my dog, just as like a reference for how much, uh, how much bigger he is. Um, absolutely massive. So I saw her in December. Um, she I posted about something on Facebook and she asked if I wanted some some fur and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll I'll get some, I'll spin it. And so she gave me a carrier bag, and I've got like this much left in it now. Um, I mean, I didn't pay a good amount of attention. Definitely did not uh, take any photos. But I'd say that this represents possibly like a single bobbin. Um, so this is probably like about a third of, of what was in there when I woke up this morning and decided to do like an unhinged dog spin. So that is what I've done this morning. So that'll be my plying. My plans for the rest of Tour de Fleece 
are to, I think, just run it like a last leg and get as much meterage in as possible. Is it important? No. Could I, could I spin as much next week if I wanted to? Yes. Could I theoretically spin every day for the rest of my life and continue to vlog it and post them on YouTube every week? God, if I wanted to, I think I probably could. Like, I can't imagine I'll be like that dedicated to it, but there's nothing that I'm doing that I can't continue to do next week. But also there is something fun about doing it together. It being a challenge, it being competition, measuring. I don't always want to work in this way. And so it's quite fun to do this for this period of time. Um, so yeah, when I'm thinking about this and also examining my, my feelings on, um, on using up fiber and getting to the end of fiber. There's a little part of me, and I think the Citri spoke about this in one of her videos, about like not wanting to use something up all the way because then you don't have it anymore and then you can't use it. Um, and part of the thing that I've been like reflecting on with some of my like declutter journey and the thought around like using nice things and using things up and not having them um, is that when you hold on to things, um, what you are doing is being very unhopeful about the future, which is um, kind of an anxiety way of thinking of like you're worrying about the future rather than kind of holding it as hope and the future is going to be bright, um, which has got value as a thing to do. But it's basically a behavioural way of expressing this is kind of as good as it's going to get. I can never get more of this. I could never get more of a thing that is that is like this or is as good as this. And I know with St. Bernard fur, this is not a limited resource. I don't see my aunt a lot, but if I if I wanted more, she's not so far away that I can't go and like drive to see her. She's not so far away that like it's very difficult or even that stressful. And she's not so busy that like she's never around or any kind of other things like that. So I could, and it's not like you only brush the dog once a year and get a small carrier bags quantity of dog fur even when you do. It's a St Bernard, not a vacuna. Like, <laughs> you don't have to go and gather them wild from the African plains and you can only shear them every two years. If I wanted bin bags and bin bags full of St Bernard's fur, I could. I could make that happen and it wouldn't even be that hard. So, in the spirit of what I was saying, uh, I think all the way back in week one about Tour de Fleece, about seeing this as a kind of new year, refresh and part of that process being clearing out the old and dealing with kind of older things and backlogs and stuff that's been going on to kind of remove that. Uh, I'm going to spin up the remainder of that St Bernard fur um, and it's going to all be gone out of my house and then at some point I might get some more um, or I might not and also that's okay and there's other dogs and there's other things for me to spin and I doubt I'm going to be <laughs> I doubt I'm going to be out in any big significant way that's going to impact me. Um, and in the spirit of wanting to use some things up completely to their conclusion, I've grabbed out a couple of other fibres from my stash, which I think would be really nice to use up in these final bits of Tour de Fleece. Um, one of them is this bat. So last year I went to the Southern Wool Show with my bestie went a little bit crazy, bought a whole load of beautiful yarn, some of which I've used, some of which is still in stash, some of it, which is in whips, so not mad about that. But I also wanted some fibre and I also wanted to try bats. And so I got three bats, a red one, a green one and a brown one. And I'm not really a big fan of brown and brown yarn. Like it's fine, it's fun, but like, yeah, I just, I got this one because I was thinking it'd be really nice to, to practice with a bat and see how it's like with with spinning bats because I hadn't before. Obviously I've got a drum carder now so I can I can spin up my own bats. Very exciting. I'll card up my own bats for spinning. Um, so I've got this one which has now been sat in stash for the full year. Not mad about but I think that it'd be quite nice to, um, during this tour de fleece, just spin up all of this. This is the bat that I um, taught my best friend to spin on her eye spin, well uh, on my eye spin and then she subsequently got her own one because she liked doing it and this is some of the fibre that we used for that so it'd be really nice to finish that up and just let uh, some new pieces of fibre and some new memories form 
with some different bits at the arm. And I also have this long piece of pretty variegated blue braid, which I have used some of, um, I've ripped strips out of and, and stuff like that. Uh, and this came with my drop spindle when I was, uh, when I bought it initially in 2017 because I thought, oh, I'll spin some alpaca floofs. That'll be fun. That'll be a good gift uh, for Bestie or I can't remember in 2017. I think that might have been when I was trying to spin hair to make weird band merch. God, every answer is just another question, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, I bought the spindle in 2017 quite a lot of the time when you buy fibre tools they come with fibre like you buy a drop spindle and some of this will be in there you buy the ice bin there's some fibre in there you buy some fibre there's some bonus fibre in there sometimes not always not regularly but like oh carding brushes fibre like so you get you get stuff all the time um just coming in with like spinning tools and so this was one of them so I didn't buy it on purpose or maybe it was a kit I don't know it was 2017 it was a while ago but yeah so this is my, uh, this is another bit of fibre, it's been hanging around in stash for about as long as I've had fibre in stash, uh, and this was still part of that, oh that fibre from that time when you thought you'd do spinning but then actually you don't really like spinning and you didn't take it up, so this was kind of, had that connotation to it. So it'd be nice to um, prove the haters wrong, and by the haters I mean myself and that one meme which I really hard related to when I was being a hater of myself about not having uh, got on with spinning. Um, and yeah, it is time to use this and to use it all the way up because it is beautiful and the colours are beautiful but it's not too beautiful to spin and it's not so beautiful it just needs to exist in stash. So that is my plan for, I'm going to say like the remainder of Tour de Fleece but by which I mean um, maybe just the remainder of today, maybe uh, t till tomorrow lunchtime, maybe... Uh, I don't know what my mental state is, is going to do. Um, maybe this will take me uh, just, just till Saturday. I don't know. So um, <laughs> I am just going to spin these things <laughs> and enjoy it and continue to enjoy laughing at my own dog who is doing lots of big uh, panting because it's really hot in the sun. Uh, so she looks like she's smiling. And now she's showing me her bum. Perfect. Get a dog. They're free entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> cool, I will catch you later and we'll see what other stupid thing I've managed to do in that time. Isn't life exciting? <laughs>
a limited resource and it's absolutely fine to completely use up something that you've got in stash. Uh, so I am charging forward ahead with that. Um, I, in a lightly unhinged moment, decided I would spin up all the singles. So I've got <laughs> four, four very super equal bobbins. I think my real passion is for measuring fibre before I spin it to make sure that it's as even as possible on the bobbin so that I can maximise my chances of spinning Miracle and ending in exactly the same spot. And other lies. So I'm going to get uh, plying on these. Like, I had the thought of like, if I, if I spin up all the singles, one, it'll get me through the using up all of the fibre thing quicker, which I think feels like a good kind of trick to use. But also I thought because I've definitely got not the same amount of fibre on any of um, any of these bobbins, I thought I'm going to be having to do lots of like folding and plying braces and stuff like that. So part of my thought was if I just start with one and then like I run out, I can just pick up from the next bobbin and potentially make it a more continuous project, which was making me think more about um, like continuity as spinning projects because like I have continuity with stash like if I want to knit up a project I go and find the yarn in my stash or and like if I need to buy a little bit to add to it then I do that um otherwise I just like get the yarn out of my stash knit out whatever I need to um combine in whatever other other balls of yarn and then whatever's left I put back in stash and I just continue doing that so it's got that that continuity onto it but with spinning, it tends to be you get the fibre, you spin the fibre, you ply it, you wash it, you finish it, and like then it's done. There's no continu uh, continuity and, and pieces that are going with it. But one thing that, that I've been doing a little bit accidentally in Stash, because I noticed I had another one. This is some South Down fibre um, that's just a little bit of a single where I've clearly got to the end and just not wound it off and, and not plied it is that maybe for like plain spinning, by which I mean just my standard sort of thickness and one fibre not combined with anything, um, maybe it's okay to kind of have these kinds of things in stash and that that might actually have some benefits. I don't know. Um, but it was kind of a nice thought around kind of continuity. Not so much for the dog, because I've used <laughs> all of the dog fibre that I've got so far. Though apparently there's more coming. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking, I'm gonna get plying, and uh, you can enjoy this lovely little video of Sonny rolling around in the snow with um, his friend Millie, I believe. <laughs> Catch you later. just like to point out that not only are we playing the tightest game of bobbin chicken that I have ever played and not only did I not weigh anything and I showed how not the same all of my uh, bobbins were we almost have a spinning miracle there's like a yard difference between the two like just combining them chaotically i didn't even plan it i just picked them up and, and started going what the heck hello and welcome back to my bathroom this time on the other side oh god we are continuing the weird theme uh, um we also have uh this is the alpaca that I washed. So I've just finished um, spinning up the dog yarn, which I followed the alpaca yarn, which is there. And um, dog smells bad. <laughs> it's not it's not so bad that I would just consider doing this anyway, and it isn't something that I've done before, but like between the dog smell and like the dog dander 
that was in there um, and like all of the alpaca dust and grease and general lanolin and stuff like the inside of this has got pretty nasty uh, you can see that there's like blackness <laughs> where it's supposed to be uh, supposed to be white all over so it's showing a lot of a lot of greasy signs and normally I'm not too worried about it um, but because I've been spinning a lot and because I've been spinning um, like a couple of really greasy nasty things I thought this is probably a good time to give it a little bit of a clean. I haven't cleaned it before. Uh, so I messaged the iSpin people on Facebook and they said avoid prolonged soaking and just give it a little bit of a scrub with a toothbrush. So I've got a cheap um, toothbrush that I have for any detailed cleaning work I need to do and some warm soapy water. So I've got my celebration tin that I use for washing yarn in. Cannot recommend highly enough, just a something like this if you want to wash your yarn and need some kind of small basin for the individual skeins to, to soak in. Um, so I've got some hand soap in there, I've got my brush and I'm going to give it a little bit of a scrub and then let it sit up here. Um, so I'm either going to be not spinning for a bit or spindle spinning for a bit. I think probably just sat and maybe doing some crochet or cross stitch or something else like that um, while I wait for this all to dry. Also, I got advice to try and not let um, too much water go up into the uh, metal bar like round here. So I'm going to try and make sure that it's not like too wet that I'm just using the water on here to like scrub it rather than like dipping it and scrubbing it like I might in um, like I might if I was like washing up and this was a plate or whatever. Uh, and I'm also going to when I leave it to dry, I'm going to rest it up like that either on the bottom of the bath, so standing up that way, or maybe hooked over one of the taps on its on its thingy, if that looks like it, it'll go. Um, I think the alpaca is... Uh, yeah, it's still pretty wet, so uh, it's gonna have to work around the alpaca. <laughs> one, like the smaller skein is slightly less wet, but yeah. Um, and then while that, while this is all drying, I will skein up my frankly ridiculously chunky um, dog fur bobbins. Uh, yeah, I've got two skeins to come off, so I will wrap those and measure them, and then they can come up this way so then they can get washed whenever I get around to doing that. <laughs> Spin is nice and clean and dry. Look how pretty. It's not like factory clean, so you can still see a little bits of the like alpaca mush, but it's so much better than it was. Um, so that is nice. So I have been spinning on that again this evening. <laughs> um, I think I had a little bit of a a little bit of a mental health moment. I was so like ready to be working today, and then um, I wasn't, and I think I just had a lot of energy that was didn't know where to go and I put it all into spinning today which is pretty cool because the spot up <laughs> like at least it's something productive like I could I could be smoking cigarettes you know so I have spun up a single and um I'm gonna wind that off uh, and this is gonna be a mystery yarn so um the mystery yarn that I do for my best friend um I like I wrap up yarn. Uh, I've started doing singles because I taught her to spin and I bought her a spinning wheel and she's got an eye spin as well um, and she's quite into plying um, so she's been like plying like she did uh, this one with like a few different commercial yarns and she got them to spin together and, and get them balanced and stuff. So I've started giving her singles as well. So I'm gonna wind this off onto my arm so I can measure it and then I'm gonna wind it off onto a loo roll so it's like ready to go onto a lazy cake. Um, and then can still go in the bag and be crushed and whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and then I'm gonna uh, wrap it up for her. Uh, I've had my antisocial spindle um, because we had someone over tonight, so I couldn't spend the whole evening spinning, which God, I just wanted to. I just had all the spinning energy. Um, but I am working tomorrow in the afternoon, so um, I'm gonna take this with me, and this is gonna be my travel project. I've got this much fibre so it's like a decent amount. It's not drafting very nicely and it's got like a weird 
sort of very shiny sort of texture to it. It's definitely an animal protein. I was, I'm assuming it's wool based on just kind of how it is, but I'm not sure. But I burnt it and it smelled like hair. So um, it's wool or another animal fibre. Who knows? It could be dog. It's probably wool. Uh, so I'm going to put this through the drum carder and hope that that kind of opens everything up and then I can, I can draft on that. And I think that's going to be the answer for that. Uh, so yeah, I've got my one other little um, piece of commercially prepped uh, wool that's the blue piece that I was looking at earlier that may also go through the card because that is also um, tight it's not as tight I reckon I could probably fluff this this is this is that much fluffier and, and kind of lighter and softer the other one's got a bit more of a I don't know it might be goat I guess that's also possible that it's a it's a mohair breed or something a little bit more like one of those longer smoother uh ones that then it's compacted a bit so um, that one's probably going to be all right at least to at least to start with um gosh my arm's getting tired i shouldn't have done it like this <laughs> i should have wound around something properly um it's a nightmare to do earlier so yeah i've still got that blue and so i'll be spinning that up on the eye spin i don't know if i'll finish that tonight um it's not my intention to, but I still have the desire to, to be doing some more spinning, especially since I've just finished this one. So, um, yeah, I'll put the thing through the drum card or I'll get myself all prepped for tomorrow when working and make sure I've got everything in the way. Even though I'm not working till the afternoon, but I'll get everything, everything prepped. So <laughs> this thing just spun round and tried to like pick up some of the other fibres. <laughs> Stop it. Behave. Um, so yeah, I'll do that and then I'll I'll maybe do some more spinning. I'll see what kind of mood I'm in uh, to get that blue one. If I run out of that, <laughs> because, uh, you know, you keep thinking that the project is the last project of Tour de Fleece. Eventually, eventually one of them will be. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. Uh, I have also got um, another one that I was going to spin as a single um, for, for my bestie. Um, she, when we were at our wool festival last year and she hadn't done any spinning, she'd tried a little bit of drop spindle but didn't like it, but she hadn't tried any of the wheel or ice spin spinning. She, um, we really liked this green and purple fibre, this braid. And um, I said if she bought one, that I would spin it for her and give it to her. And now that she's started spinning, I'm going to, I said that I would spin it as a single and then she could ply it however she wanted, um, rather than doing all the spinning, which she was pretty keen about. So um, I've also got that. Uh, it was a hundred grams as a braid to start with, and I've done quite a lot of it already. So I think maybe there's, um, I don't know. There's some left. I would say that we're probably more in like the half, two thirds than kind of five, six or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I don't think there's wildly too much. So that one might come down in the in the spirit of doing things and finishing off and and generosity and all of that. So, yeah, that's where we are at. Uh, Thursday evening, not quite bedtime, but um, finishing finishing off another project having another set of meters to put into my spreadsheet which is looking very nice so this is this is project number five um if we go from what i was saying initially it's it's five of one <laughs> so, yeah cool i will update again when there is something interesting to say maybe it will be tonight to say that i've spun all my blue fiber and i need to go and find something else to do uh maybe it'll be <laughs> Oh, that looks so nice. Look at that. Mm, cute. Um, and a decent quantity. Mystery yarn used to be three grams. <laughs> I have spun you a yarn. And she's like, yay! It's such a wonderful friendship. Um, but yeah, she'll like this one. Uh, I'll, I'll come back. Maybe it'll be, I've spun everything. Maybe it'll be, I didn't do any spinning because I was busy. Who knows? I'll catch you later.
I did it again. Look, we finished on the unscathed. <laughs> really getting those last sort of miles in um, on my on my ice bin. So this is that blue fibre that I showed last night. Um, I didn't end up spinning it last night. I have spun it all this morning. Um, it's about 11 o'clock. Uh, it's 20 to 11. And um, there was somebody outside this morning who uh, had their dog just barking um, just on the street corner. Just so much. And it woke me up about 8.30. And I hung out in bed for a little bit and then came downstairs and started spinning yarn. So I've been spinning for like an hour and a half maybe um and the uh fiber that i had i it's tricky to know how much there is uh when you're when you're looking at it because i think bats always end up looking massive but they're also like carded so they're quite airy so there's actually a lot less fiber on them whereas the braids you can be like oh it's just a tiny little bit and then it's got like miles and miles of yardage on it so um yeah, this wasn't like Miles, the bobbin wasn't like chungus -y. I hope you saw it before, because... <laughs> I've already wound it off. I guess you can put the video back a little bit. Forget that you're not, like, here in person. <laughs> yeah, I guess I could I could edit a picture in when I work out how to do that with the editing software. Um, so yeah, it's not made massive, massive quantities, but I always feel like braids, it looks like you've just got a yard in there and then it's and then it's a lot. Uh, so this is it. I've chain plied it because I got most of the way through spinning the bobbin as a single and went, oh shoot, I was supposed to probably do like separate it and make it so I could ply it. So uh, all off a single one. Um, I'm really happy with this. This looks cute. I think it's probably accurate to say that I've spun the colours quite muddy. So um, there's different techniques you can use to make sure that the, the colours stay more separate um, with the stripes. And I didn't do any of that, so they've all blended quite well. So the whole thing is quite a uniform colour. Um, and you have to get in quite close before you start seeing the kind of variegated aspects of it, apart from that one barber pole <laughs> right there with the white. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that because it's not too, it's variegated enough that it's interesting and I think it'll probably show up more in a swatch, um, so like when it's knitted up, but um, it's not that like bright and variegated, um, just in the skein by itself. So that is, oh, I don't even know, I think I worked out that's like the seventh project if we take each like every time I've changed like what I'm doing um <laughs> this this project will take me to the end of Tour de Fleece and other lies I tell myself um so I guess I'm gonna go and find some more fiber <laughs> I've got um I think I vaguely mentioned that I had that other single that I was gonna spin for for Bestie the um braid that she bought so um I guess I'll bring that down and then I can just spin that up as a single and do the same thing as I did with uh, this guy. Um, so that's all. That's the single and it's, it's there and it's ready to go on a lazy cape uh, if she wants to do that. Or she can just finish it and whatever. Uh, speaking of finishing and wet setting and stuff, um, I am going to stop wet setting um, and washing fibre and stuff from now um, until the end of Tour de Fleece and then I will give them a wash afterwards because I want to show them all at the end and have them all together and they definitely won't be dry if I start washing them now like Friday to Sunday. Uh, the weather is pretty warm at the moment but um, yeah. Uh, so I've got the alpaca, the little skein if that's almost dry um, or it might actually be dry now, it was almost dry last night and then the bigger skein of alpaca which is still drying and then I've got the two dog fur skeins, which I washed last night. So that, I'm just going to let them dry, bring them down, and then everything else I'm going to just uh, wait until after Tour de Fleece. So yeah, that's another one biting the dust as it were. Going to bring down some more fibre, may or may not start spinning it. Oh, I carded up the spindle stuff so that's now ready to go. Um, it's still quite dense because I gave it a little test twizzle last night. but. Um, yeah, so that's ready to go out, so if I get time while I'm out and want to do some spinning, then I can do. Um, 
Also, I checked the fleece uh, yesterday and it was completely dry, which was um, exactly what I expected. So I think it's probably fair to say it needs about a week and a half if it's like a whole fleece laid out and the weather isn't super sunny. Um, that that's because it was it's been quite rainy and quite uh, quite cold. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go grab some more fibre. I'm gonna check in when something else has happened, and um, I've got work this afternoon until this evening and when I get back I'll need to have food and prep so I don't know prep for going out tomorrow so I don't know if I'll have more spinning this evening I don't know I'll stop when I have to have lunch and then that can be me getting ready at that point so. catch you later <laughs> So it is the end of the day on Friday, it's quarter to twelve, um, and I'm going to be going to bed in a minute. And uh, I finished some stuff, and I've started some more stuff. So I did take the spindles out with me um, when I was uh, working, and I will do that again when I'm working. Um, well, I'm working tomorrow on a, on a different thing, so I'm doing circus work tomorrow, and then I'm doing this uh, other temp job, um, which is at, at the uni around graduation. Um, on Sunday and I'll take the spindles for both because although there was definitely like no time to to sit and do spindle spinning um today apparently Sunday's going to be quieter because it's just about collecting gowns in advance of things I don't know um I'm only doing the job for a couple of days uh, through an agency so um I'll put the spindles in my bag because it feels kind of it feels like a shame to not do that for the past couple of days and I suspect I might get a little bit of time um, tomorrow if I have like a proper break but the work that I was doing like all of the work that I'm doing from like today to Tuesday um, so I've got another circus thing on Tuesday I've got more of this um, uni work it's quite a uh, physical work that I'm doing um, and a lot of it today involved like this movement and this is the shoulder that gets a certain amount of like persistent pain and things so uh, that's kind of sore at the moment and spindle spinning very much kind of hits that same um, same thing with the drop spindle um, I think even if you're doing kind of clasped in hand maybe support spindle wouldn't be so much but and like spinning wheel I spin drafting isn't but um, yeah so I strongly suspect Although we know what my prediction skills are like at this point, that the um, red and green uh, fibre that I've got on the spindle at the moment, uh, I won't get through to the end of that. Um, if I'm assuming that I just do it on on spindle, I might pop some on the on the e spinner. Um, I finished the grapple that I started, the green and purple fibre. Uh, we had originally spoken about uh, when I bought it. Um, when she bought it and gave it to me to spin um, and then return. He said about me spinning it, so um, I just spun it as a two-ply exactly as it kind of had been um, for previous bits I've done because I did I did a little bit and then I have uh, gave it to her and then I did a little bit and I gave it to her, etc, etc. So um, this just goes with the previous one exactly kind of as it was, so it's going to be gifted later on uh, and I also spun some of it up as a single because more recently we'd spoken about um, doing it as a single uh, and then having her ply it because she was enjoying plying so uh, here it is as a single and I remember to keep both ends available um, which I did not do on the other single that I, I wrapped up certainly the need to be uh, rewound onto something to get both ends of it to do it as a centre pull or um, applied with something else or chain applied um but that's that done um finished that and then felt like i had the need ooh, finished that and felt like i had the need to do something else so i decided that i would do some thread wrapping um which is something i haven't seen anybody do like videos on or anything it looks like this um, basically I've got this white 
that of Barbara, just from this year, and then just like a reel of sewing cotton. And there's a book, oh, it's not Yarn Texture, or maybe it is. It's one of the ones that Julian Eve recommended, and it had a whole load of stuff in it, and I bought, had a whole load of um, books in there, and it talks about like different structures and things, uh, different methods of putting things together that's like singles, two ply, coils, beehives. Um, and one of the things in there was thread wrapping. And basically you're supposed to do like a kind of fat single um, and then you hold the thread like away. So when you're drafting, you like pull like that and then you hold the cotton thread so it wraps around and you get this kind of barber poly stripey effect um see it affects the integrity because it makes it like really strong so um and and my understanding is that you don't ply this i guess you could if you wanted to it's free it's easy and the cops can't stop you um so yeah it's particularly done as a single which is how i'm gonna how i'm gonna spin it it's something that i was interested in partially as like a thread declutter because i realized i've got more thread than I would like to have just in stash as a person that's not doing loads of sewing at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's something that's kind of been in the back of my head to do, so this felt like when I was scrambling around for something to do because I'd finished another project, God, one of them will take me to the end of Tour de Fleece, <laughs> then yeah, so that's I just decided that I would, I would do that. So I'm just going to do the one bat, um, wind it up and see if I have any kind of reflections on it. Uh, at the moment my thought is that it's all very inconsistent so I don't know if it's something that can become more consistent, I don't know if it's something that can use different um, threads, so like uh, embroidery floss maybe it would be like a interesting thing to incorporate that way or, or something like that so um, who knows. So that's just what I've got going on there that may or may not take us to the end. <laughs> I might need to have a few more eye spin things. My plan is that I'm going to go out to work on Sunday um, and whatever, when I come back, whatever I've got that needs like plying and finishing. So if, it, if I came back to this, I would finish spinning the bat. Um, and then like wind it and stuff and then that'll be that'll be my end point. I don't know if there's rules about like what time you're supposed to finish um, but I did start at like late on Saturday <laughs> when I started it so I don't feel bad about finishing like super late on the Sunday it's not like I woke up and I'm doing it block to block not that that would be a problem either I suppose so yeah I'm definitely rambling. Um, one of the other things that I've like noticed which I thought was kind of interesting because um, I can you can compare uh, how you are like as a spinner as far as like how consistent is your yarn like can you can you get the yarn that's in your head to the yarn that exists then in reality um, are you able to know about like lots of different breeds because you have more experience of it and then you can um, choose the right sort of fleece for the project that you want one of the things that I've really noticed, which I don't hear other people really talking about, is like how long you can spin for. Not like you can sit for an hour or and then like after you've been spinning for a year, you can sit for two hours or three hours and, and the your hands don't cramp or anything like that. But kind of like the, the mental side of it, because I feel like there's a little bit of a strain when you're you're spinning up the first bobbin and then you have to spin up the second one like to match it so there's a temptation when you're doing the first bobbin that you don't do as much because you know that you're going to have to then do the same amount again and I guess there's like a temptation as well to like or you get like the super enthusiasm in when you're doing like the first one and then the second one you're like oh I just want it to be over and there's like so much more single I have to do um because you kind of want the dopamine rush of plying um, because also like plying requires a bit less skill um, especially if it's just like a plain two fibres going in S single and Z um, ply or vice versa that there's not actually like as much skill with the plying so it can feel like quite satisfying to do as a 
as a beginner that's struggling perhaps with some of the drafting and the tensioning and things like that. Um, and I think I experienced that a lot less now. So therefore I've ended up with, because of that like emotional drive to just do a little bit and then finish it and then, oh, it's done and look what I've made like that I've been able to make much longer skeins um and I've really noticed that with this grapple now granted there was not much left but I did look at it and it was like maybe a quarter of the braid I I might be just estimating badly based on like what I picked up but what I picked up wasn't like an 18th like it was it was a substantialish part and I sat down and span it like it was fine like it wasn't a big project and also compared to a lot of the other projects that I've done today and <laughs> this week and this tour de fleece it's not a lot it's um it's much shorter uh, and when I first started like I'd I'd ripped it in half and thought oh I'll just do one one ply one bobbin I'll, the other ply the other bobbin and I'll ply them together and I'll just do it all and that'll be like one situation and I I remember not getting like an eighth of it in like I'd I pulled off a little piece <laughs> and that was all I did and then I was absolutely exhausted so it's it's interesting to have got to the end of that braid and just been like oh yeah then this is fine just put the whole braid on and to be able to kind of get to the end of it and I think there's something within that about like you that using up a whole thing because it looks like oh I mean there's there's so much there there's so much fiber there's a hundred grams of fiber that's going to take so long to spin and it's going to have to be like multiple sittings and so you don't necessarily approach it and it's possible that I got that mentality early on um and possibly I've even had that with knitting because it took me a long time to knit something as absolutely massive as a jumper and now like you can crank them out <laughs> like one after the other and don't really think too much about it not necessarily super quick but you know in a couple of weeks or a month or whatever it is to to turn a jump around if I'm working fairly consistently on it it's not anywhere near as big a deal as I'd made it out to be and I think that's possibly also true for spinning so looking at these braids in my stash like it was just going to be absolutely hours and days and weeks and months and session after session of doing it when actually it's like yeah you can you can probably crack that out in a week of not very dedicated spinning <laughs> but it's actually a lot less of a deal so I think there's a, a little bit of a recalibration there which will then hopefully mean that my stash is less overstuffed because actually I can get through everything that much quicker um so I'm less you know stable as we say in the knitting community I'm not stashing beyond my life expectancy even if I've got multiple fleeces because I can I can just take like a whole bat or or something like that and it doesn't matter as um it doesn't matter that I've got so much anyway it is late uh I have to get up at silly o'clock tomorrow so that I can go and do a really long day of circusing um and I'm driving everybody around uh <laughs> yay at least I don't have to pack all the equipment in my car. Anyway, I will check in. There might be some footage of me spinning tomorrow. Um, but otherwise, I will check in with you again on Sunday. Catch you later. Is that like pre dyed? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a. Uh... Oh. Yeah, this is. I bought a spinning oh, wheel for B. And this one, um, yeah. Yeah. like. Because they were getting rid of it from somebody that had died. Okay, sorry, that old guy okay. They yeah. were like, oh yeah, she had all this other like fiber and these weird accessories and stuff. Did you want those too? And so we just got like a, you know, the elephant Sainsbury's bag. Yeah. It's basically one of those full. And uh, I told B, like, I love you, but uh, I am taking some of this fiber out for myself. So this is one where I just really like this color. Yeah, that fiber looks really easy to wear as well. I carded it. I, I processed it differently. Because how it was before was really, like, super dense. Um, 
So I put it through the drawing card. Take it back tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, spindles even have some nice little like, like design cards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is a. I think this is a cheap one from Amazon. It was a gift. But um, my neighbour has the same one that she bought, and she said it was a cheap one from Amazon. So <laughs> Seems like it does the job. Yeah, it's nice. It's weirdly long. It's got like a really long stick in it. If you want really pretty, you can start like winding it nicely around the top oh, and then dude. you can get some like diagonals on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a draft. Oh, I could go for so long. Yeah, you could. Be a lot of tension in the yarn though. Okay, so it's been a long day today, but I did get back a bit earlier than I expected. I half thought because I wasn't sure about like evening plans I thought that I might be back at like one in the morning but I was not um I was back by like half nine which means I finished another bit of spinning on the ice bin so this is that thread wrapped yarn um I think it looks really interesting and I think I need to knit this up before I make another one um using this technique so obviously the yarn is very like strong because it's got thread going like all the way through it so even in the parts where it's like fluffy wound there aren't that many of those or the parts where it's got like really super thin there's still a lot of um there's still a lot of structural integrity to it even though this is like a singles yarn uh, that's just kind of got thread wrapped around it as part of the spinning process so yeah, I think I need to like see how this works up before I can know what I might want to do in any kind of future ones because there are parts where it's wrapped very horizontally, there are parts where it's a bit more vertical, there are parts where it's a fatter single, parts where it's thinner, um, a bit more like what I normally spin, like the singles that I was uh, spinning yesterday or like that I've been doing the whole time. So um, yeah. I think it's going to be a case of finishing this, knitting it up into a little swatch and just kind of getting a bit more of a feel for what the finished project, finished product is like to then have an idea of like what I might want to do with this in the future or if there are maybe two or three different things and it's got like different character to it, which like what might be suitable for what in, in which situation. But yeah, basically another one there. I had a couple of quiet moments. So um, I did get a teeny bit of spindle spinning a little bit um, before the setup because the traffic was good this morning um, or I just left early enough and we didn't get to the traffic uh, and then just like a little bit just as part of the part of the pack down. So did get a little bit of spindle spinning, not loads. Carding it was definitely the right choice. So I've got a little bit on tomorrow. I've definitely got work in the afternoon. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to spin, if I'm going to spin anything. Um, I will take a spindle tomorrow, I may even take the pair of spindles so I've got like spare. Um, but I might grab out some of that bat, so I don't take the whole bat with me, because I doubt I'm going to spin a lot tomorrow if I spin anything um like while I'm while I'm out at work uh, even if it is quiet I don't think I'm going to be going to be doing that much so I might take part of that bat and spin it up on the um I spin um just so I can then uh have something ready to ply that's probably what I'm going to do tomorrow so I can get that red and sort of like dark red and green um bit that I had on the spindle that I was working on today uh, from Wednesday I think it was I started that one um, so it's just a spindle spin and it's got a certain amount of it so I'll um, yeah set up the plies and then just do that as a two ply and that'll probably be 
that'll be the one that ends it. <laughs> this one might actually have like, yeah, she's got three hours of spinning left. Uh, and then it'll just be that last one. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I'll sneak another little project in there, but I, I feel like with one day left <laughs> where I'm doing other stuff, uh, we're not going to have that much. But who knows? So yeah, my plan is to uh, get it edited, uploaded on Monday. Um, maybe because I'm also working on Monday, but not in the morning. So yeah. <sighs> anyway, I should go to sleep. I need to put my dog to bed as well. She needs to go to sleep in her bed. And I will check back in tomorrow, at least once at the end to do a wrap up. Uh, if not, a couple of times. Catch you later. I'm thinking because of how busy we were the other day, that there wouldn't be. It's like, oh, should I even bring stuff? Like, we probably won't have a chance. It'll be too busy. <laughs> and I'm really glad I did now. <laughs> I get it tangled. Yeah. Oh, shoot. It's alright. It's alright, you can just tie it back on again. Where was it? Can we never look? So that's the working one. Oh, yeah. That's the one that everyone's been learning on, but like if I've caught anyone, so it's bumpy and knotted and weird. <laughs> But it's quite nice, I think. Where do you post your vlogs? Uh, it's going to be on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Let's see if you can find it, because I've done two parts already. So this is like the third and final one. There's a like sort of challenge thing for like the time that the Tour de France is on, called the Tour de Fleece. Oh, yeah. And it's supposed to, you're supposed to try and spin yarn every day that they're doing the cycling race. Um, and some people like to film it and talk about what they've been spinning and focus on like a specific breed of sheep or something. It is Sunday evening on the last day of Tour de Fleece and I think this is going to be my penultimate check-in for today because uh, it all ends tonight so um, <laughs> that's really ominous. Tour de Fleece, it's the last day today um, so I am just going to finish off the couple of little bits that I've got um, and uh, let you know what's going on basically and then put it all up and close out the vlog. Um, I've quite enjoyed doing vlogging and I think, although I don't necessarily want to do it sort of all the days like I had been and, and all of that, I think I have some desire to do some project vlogs um, and I've been really feeling the desire to do some sewing so I might, um, I might make a few bits so if you're on the channel and watching stuff know that that might happen uh, so having said today <laughs> that the work that I've been doing has been really busy and I wasn't going to get time to spin and I didn't even know if I was going to take my spindle or whatever um, the temp agency that sent me out to do work uh, actually gave us the wrong time <laughs> So we, we rocked up at 2.30 and they didn't actually want us there till 4. So we just sat outside the room that we were supposed to be in. There was no one in there uh, for an hour and a half. So I was very glad 
that I had my spindle. I mean, I had knitting as well, so like I was, I wasn't going to be bored, and I had a book. <laughs> Always ready to sit quietly for hours and hours on end and not be bored. Um, and I have my phone, like <laughs> infinite stuff. But yeah, I took my spindle. Um, so I was spinning up the red fibre, which I showed previously, which is the it's a mystery raffle ticket fibre, but also we think it's probably I burnt it and it was kind of wool. Um, and this was like uh, dyed and then purchased um, by the person that had the spinning wheel. So that's this fibre. Um, oh, th this? Yeah, no, this isn't all of it because uh, the cob was getting really big and I didn't have anything to wrap it around. <laughs> so uh, this is the book that I've been reading, which I got um, for free from outside someone's house, I think. Um, so yeah, I wrapped my single around it. So I'm thinking that's going to be really helpful for plying. I'm going to ply it on the on the ice uh, on the ice spin on the e spinner. Um, I'm going to start plying it, and then hopefully uh, it's easy enough to find the middle of this, and then I'll probably ply it from the center because otherwise it's going to be like the biggest plying bracelet ever. Because I do not think that there is the same amount of fiber on the both of those, like in the slightest. It's probably like a third of it, but we'll see how far we go, and then. Um, Hopefully I'll be able to just find the middle and uh, continue it on that way um, in some form of applying bracelet. I don't know how you're supposed to put this on a lazy cape. <laughs> don't know. She was dumb. But another nice thing about being there with someone and about having put in the second spindle, which I also wasn't going to do. Loud video game playing on the other side of the room. Um, is I taught my other temp pal uh, how to how to spin, and he spun up the entire rest of the bat that I had in here on my. Oh, apart from that bit, oh, Joel. <laughs> that he he finished uh, spinning up. I asked like, oh, did you want any more red fiber? Did you want to keep going? And he was like, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. But like, I think he had a good time. He he seemed to really pick it up. So. Yeah, uh, that is my teaching bat that's lumpy and bumpy and weird and probably bits of it are spun in the wrong direction and there's maybe bits that have been picked up from the ground it's from dirt and whatever. Um, but yeah, it's done. I'm going to go through like my memory and my calendar and, and actually like write down all of the, the names of the people that I... Um, that I taught how to spin over tortifly, so I have like a proper number. I know it's more than like seven, um, but I don't know how close I got to actually ten. Obviously, could have had another one from today. Uh, so single yarn isn't like the strongest and isn't the most usable by itself. Uh, but I did want to, like, I want to keep this and I want to keep it in a nice way. I want to represent it somehow. So. I figured because like this will be the project that takes you to the end of Tour de Fleece. There's no possible way that I could add extra pro and other lies. <laughs> it, will never, it will never be the last project for Tour de Fleece. Um, I figured I'd take some white yarn so it's got really good contrast so we'd be able to just see um, and I'm just going to spin this up as a single. I ripped a bat in half because I don't think this is a whole this is a whole bat but also like it's it spun up five times the thickness of <laughs> anything else. Like a lot, a lot of it is this thick, so it's not going to need like the mileage that I'm going to get from like spinning the other one like this. So I'm going to spin just the other single like this, which is the standard way that I spin to like whatever thickness this is, um, in white. And then I'm just going to apply them together. And when I count that, I'm going to count my white single. I'm going to count my plying, but I'm not going to count the black, um, the black yarn because I did not spin that. I turned the spindle a couple of times to tell people how, but I did not spin it. That was spun by other people. And I think there is um, perhaps an argument making uh, that some percentage of the yarn that was spun should be attributed to me because I taught the person how to do it. If we go with some sort of MLM rules uh, on a commission. In many ways I've then spun quite a lot of yarn, but um, I don't think we're counting it in Gillian Eve or Mine Walden's um, meterage either and that was a big part of how I learnt to spin so this one is going to stand as the testament to having taught other people how to their um, to their achievements and their accomplishments um, and I am going to finish it off for them as their teacher 
so that it can remain preserved um, and then that'll be washed. Really happy with this one. I'm really happy with having taught so many people and I will give the totals um, probably later this evening uh, because I am going to do the final yarn reveal, all of the yarn that I spun, um, all of the and all of the numbers and all of the statistics with it. So um, I guess this is your content warning if you find that find maths terrible. Um, but I think maths is great, so I'm going to give you loads of numbers. Um, so yeah, you can you can duck out on that uh, before that, and I'll give my kind of reflections on Tour de Fleece and maybe a little bit of a critical analysis. I don't know. I don't know. I still don't know. I still don't have a plan. <laughs> I'm still winging it. <laughs> I've been winging it this whole time. <laughs> cool. I will catch you in a bit. <laughs> up this one as I was intending to and managed to get all of the stuff off the book into a centre pull ball that was fine and found the middle just slid it off absolutely fine yarn I spun up the single on the white and like the amount that the red spindle had created was more than I expected so I decided that I'd I'd add a little extra like it's I'd spin up the entire half bat, even though it was looking like it probably already had enough. And, and I've got this, and this is very nice and very cool, and I feel exactly as excited by it. But I managed to spin up and just, 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 yeah, I'll just fold it in half. I'll just, I'll just do the last little bit and some sort of little prime bracelet or a noodle, noodle, noodly noodle. So now I'm chain plying this, so now I have like another, I was just expecting a little kind of leftover skein, just a little like one yard or whatever, but this is going to be a whole massive skein by itself. Oh my gosh, when will, when will we get the last project of the Tour de Fleece? This, I'm chain plying this, so I won't have any leftovers. This will be it, it's the last day, it's the evening of the last day. We are unlikely to run into any unexpected scenarios. Oh god. When, when will it end? <laughs> Let's play this.
We did it! We got through the whole of Tour de Fleece spinning every day and I spun loads of yarn and I think it is time for the reveal. Um, here it all is. I put it in a basket because I thought that would be aesthetically interesting. I did have it in a different crochet basket but it was too much. I spun too much in my crochet basket. Arguably it's not all fitting in here very nicely either. <sighs> very exciting! So I'm gonna show you everything, we have a little recap um, in any random order. So this is the chain ply um, of the white that I had left over from making this one, which is my learning yarn and I'm gonna unwind this one because it's so lovely. Um, this is my lumpy bumpy little uh, little learning yarn that I taught people on. <laughs> so we've got some some really really skinny bits. <laughs> this is probably what I would like spin like if I was just doing it. Um, and then we've got some really chunky pieces and we've got some of this uh, scenario where it's got quite chunky and a bit of a mixture. So yeah, that one is very cute, very happy with that. Kind of gone in reverse chronological order actually, let's keep doing that. This is the red and teal which I spun um, entirely on spindle and then I did apply it on the e-spinner. That's the red and teal, the colours have come out quite muddy again which I like. Um, so yeah, it's reading very much as like red with an accent um, of a kind of teal going through it. What did we have before that? Was it dog yarn? That's what was drying the most recently. Oh, these are two chunky ones. <laughs> there's over a hundred meters on each of on each of these. I think it definitely there's over a hundred wraps. So yeah, two chunky, quite fuzzy little characters and like you, when you work with this one it kind of blooms up and fluffs up and all of that and that is St Bernard and I think we had the alpaca before that so like two alpaca balls one little one one quite chunky we had our three ply um, of the mixed bats that I got from when I was carding up all of the fibre and I had like not enough black to finish one and then not enough grey to finish one so that was our mixed three ply and that was the two ply um, from the leftovers that didn't make it into the three ply for that. This is the holographic yarn that I've made as a gift which is half the grey sheep's wool and half acrylic and uh, this is the leftovers of that, there's the two ply. This is that blue colour, we've lost the reverse chronological order. <laughs> this is uh, the three ply and this is uh, something that came with my drop spindle when I first bought it back in 2017 and has been sat in stash waiting for me to be good enough to spin it and I've decided that I am good enough to spin it now. This is the grapple which I bought last year um, for uh, my best friend, she bought it and I said I would spin it for her so this is the last of that spun up uh, into a two-ply yarn and anything that didn't make into that I have as a single for her to choose to spin uh, if and how she wants to from a single and have in her stash because she learnt to spin since last year. This is the single brown bat from uh, last year, that same wool show and this is the one that I taught her to spin on with an ice spin. So I have spun the remainder of it up as a single, ready to ply, should she so wish. And our first mega project, which I think has had the most yardage out of all of the projects, is our red to black skein for our triangle shawl. So I, I made loads of yarn. <laughs> it's been really fun. I'm going to take you over to the computer now and uh, I'll give you all of the numbers for everything um, and then try and work out which yarns I haven't, haven't washed. <laughs> so 
So yeah, this is my basket of Tour de Fleece yarn. <laughs> and there's loads. I wasn't expecting that. Hello and welcome to my desk. I'm going to go through some of the numbers and see how far um, I've spun. Uh, so I worked it out by, obviously you saw me wrapping things around my arm, that's what I did with every one of the skeins and how I measured them so it was all consistent across the whole um, Tour de Fleece. For the ones with like over a hundred, when I did like hundreds together, that um, that was a lot and I had some regrets. So I measured around my arm and I gave myself, I estimated that was about 70 centimetres based on the, I wrapped a tape measure around and it was it was about that. Um, it varies a little bit depending on like how much I bend my hand, you know, because that, that changes the distance, but for about where I had it, um, that's 70 centimetres. So I measured the number of wraps I had, um, like how many times I'd gone round, multiplied that by 70 to get the note um total um uh centimeters uh divided that down by 100 to get the total distance in meters and then i've converted it to yards uh miles and just for fun um and like i did the distance in plies as well so for a single ply uh single spin i just had it as it was for a two ply, um, I timesed it by three, so one for each single and one for the ply. For a three ply yarn, I timesed it by four. And for the one yarn where I did like the, the learning one, as I said, um, I multiplied it by two. So I had the learning one, which I didn't do, the one single that I did, and then the ply. So that's what they got the two from. So for interest, I think the what was the biggest one that I did? The longest distance in meters um, for a, a for any individual skein is the single that I did on the brown bat. This one says so the the remainders of the bat uh, after I taught my best friend how to spin on an ice bin. The next biggest is actually the first one that I spun, uh, which is this Scarlet Burgundy and Black Monster. Uh, I ended up with uh, five skeins on this. Uh, it's ended up as two cakes, but they were five skeins, and the one that had the Scarlet in it uh, was the longest, 116.9 metres. The shortest was the mixed fat leftovers that's a two ply which is this one which comes in at a mere nine meters um, which is very cute um i feel like i spun a lot of little ones that look like this right at the start and then i gifted them to my friend and she was so kind <laughs> for the absolute uselessness of what i've been making um Things in general seem to have averaged out around. Uh, oh, it's quite a lot of vary, so like it's sort of varying around um, the fifty to one hundred. I would say that that I was going to say that encompasses most of it. It doesn't. Um, the twenty five to a twenty five to ninety um, pretty much covers all of them um, for variety for every skein the final meterage in it um plies wise uh so if i'm thinking of the multiplications of how many times it's gone through the hand the longest is by an absolute meters <laughs> by a really long way is the scarlet burgundy and black the first skein um that i spun at 350.7 meters of spinning um after that it is the bigger one of oh no after that it is the fat alpaca one that i did this guy uh which is 338 and then after that it's whichever of these dog fur ones is bigger they were both pretty chunky ones um at 243.6 and the shortest amount of like spinning 
is same winner it's a two fly mix bat at 27.3 um spun uh times it's gone through my hands <laughs> can we tell i'm getting a bit tired uh so by pro so we also added up everything by project um oh i'll go through yardage as well so uh 127.89 is the scarlet uh, burgundy and black that first skein um then it's the alpaca um at 123.29 yards and the brown single is 140.14 yards and that tiny little two ply mixed bat um is 9.96 yards um in case anybody is watching that uses different um measuring systems so i also totaled it all up by project um so the first project which is also <laughs> to remind you the one that i thought i was going to do uh like for the whole project um <laughs> uh, one of 12 uh, was the biggest at 270.9 the mixed bats uh like and this is the overall meters as opposed to the amount that i applied so the final yarn meterage uh, the mixed bat that I did was 67.9 metres. The holographic yarn and leftovers were 63. Uh, I did 139.3 metres of alpaca, 152.6 of dog fur, 128.1 of brown single, 28 metres of the blue variegated yarn, um, 67.9 meters of gurpal so both the skeins uh 83.3 thread wrapped single 51.1 uh like red and teal uh 11.9 of the learning yarn and 22.4 of the white leftovers um i also put in because <laughs> I watched the Gillian Eve video that I've mentioned a few times where she was doing a competition and it turns out what she was doing was spin together and she said one of the things that really like made her sad was that you'd seen somebody post to go I spun 10 miles today and like obviously she was exaggerating um because you know, miles and miles like it's, you know, no one's gonna spin miles and miles maybe maybe other people are but I was like, <laughs> since I've got the conversions, since I'm just seeing the maths and since it's in a spreadsheet, uh, why don't I just look up what the miles are and work out, like, if I was in a labyrinth and I had my ball of yarn, how far could I get away from my minotaur? Might I escape? Um, or in the labyrinth of the real world, can I go and visit one of my pals? Um, my best friend lives three miles away. I looked it up on, on Google Maps. Um, I could not go and visit her if I needed to tie a piece of yarn to my house um, and go. So I did about 0 0.7 miles um, of spinning and that's uh, overall meterage, um, like a final yarn rather than uh, the amount of plies that went through my hands, which if we count it the other way, maybe we're going to get something much closer to being able to go and have a visit. Um, but I have a couple of friends that live closer than that, so I can go and visit my neighbour. And she spins as well, so I think we'd probably be all right. We'd 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 escape the Minotaur together, perhaps. <laughs> um, and one of the other goals that I had was to keep teaching people. And very much with all of the enthusiasm of having just started something, and being like, I'm doing so well, I'm going to continue at exactly this rate. Like forgetting that the enthusiasm dies down and, and the effort for it for it goes until right at the end when you're getting to the deadline. Um, I was going to teach people how to spin. So I carried around a second spindle and anybody that wanted to learn or um, that I could talk into trying had a go. And by my count, I taught eight people how to spin. Um one of those is a little bit of a generous count of like he did it once and then went oh I've got to go um and he genuinely did because uh that was like at the back of the musical um but yeah and I seem to have done that reasonably consistently across the entire time so uh, one person on the 1st of July two people on the 9th someone on the 11th the 12th the 17th 15th and 21st so 
it has been kind of across the whole period of time, which is quite nice. I wasn't just only teaching at the start. I feel like I've missed more people out because I feel like I counted earlier and I got kind of eight before I added, but I can only remember eight. Uh, and I also had three spinning hangouts, just not no teaching, no anything else, just I had a spindle, maybe they had a spindle, um, or maybe they used mine, and we hung out. So that was with Hannah, who was a forestry teacher at a school, um, Vicky, my neighbour, and Jan, uh, one of the artists at Life Modeling. So what is the ultimate total? And I have not looked. I set up the maths to, um, because you can say I just want everything in this column to add up on a spreadsheet. And I've put it on a separate sheet and I haven't looked. So this is my first reveal for how how much I spun. Oh my god, I spun over a thousand meters. <laughs> oh, that's insane. Oh, I wouldn't have expected it. I'm I'm so bad at, at estimating and knowing this. Oh my gosh. I spun 1,086.4 metres of yarn. And for the the multiplying for how much I'd um, done as plies and things, uh, it was 2,846.2 metres of yarn passed through my hands in the last three weeks. <laughs> That's that's not that far off being a thousand meters of yarn per week that I touched. That is insane. I was not expecting the number to be that high. I was thinking it was going to be at a five hundred because I'd done the two hundred and fifty, and then nothing was matching anywhere near as close. Oh, that is crazy. That is mad. I was not expecting that. I'm very happy. I'm very happy with that. So final wrap up conclusions. I was going to go and sit back on the floor, but I may as well just do it while I'm here. Um, I have had fun. I have had a good time. I have spun more yarn than I was expecting to. Um, and I have quite enjoyed vlogging and I haven't even hated editing. Um, I have quite enjoyed teaching as well. I already knew that I, I quite like teaching people fibre arts and I quite like not necessarily giving people a new skill, but helping somebody understand that the barrier to entry isn't insurmountable. It's either not as bad as they thought or they are more able to get over it than they thought. That if they if they're seeing something and it looks difficult and it looks complicated or looks like you can't do it, um, sitting down and giving them the help that they can to get it. So then they have that, oh my goodness, I've done it. Um, that's something that's always been valuable to me and it's been it's been really pleasing to, to do that. Um, I was reflecting a bit on my journey as a spinner and sort of more broadly as a crafter and person that likes to acquire skills. And I think spinning has been a really uh, unique experience in that I have felt good about my spinning the whole way through. Um, so, like, I spun up my first little piece of lumpy, bumpy, weird yarn. I've gone like, look what I made, I made something. Um, and then, like, I've got better and I was like, wow, look at what baby me made when I didn't know how to spin anything and it's all lumpy and weird and it's just been consistently joyful and I don't know if that's because I properly started learning after having a lot of therapy and dealing with a lot of um, underlying issues and stuff or I cut a lot of toxic people out of my life and I also had like a full mental breakdown before I probably started spinning. So any one of those might have really contributed to it as opposed to it being spinning by itself. But it has been really nice. And like one of the only places that um, the only, only times I felt a little bit weird was when I started comparing myself to the absolute giant chungus yarns that uh, Mine Walden was making. And that's that's unpack comparison is a theft of joy. 
She's a more experienced spinner. She's doing something different. Even she was surprised that she got through her fleece that quickly. Um, and after a little bit of talking to myself, I can quite happily say that it's fine. I've done what I've done. She's done what she's done and it's all cool. And it's been really nice to be part of something that um, other people in the in the community have done because... There are quite a lot of knitters around. There are a few spinners. I've been teaching more of my friends. So, you know, build the community from the ground up. Um, but like knitting groups by themselves tend to draw a certain age demographic. And and that's lovely and it's amazing. And um, spinning groups, I think, even more heavily draw from that same demographic of much older people and predominantly women and the kind of people that are into spinning that are older aren't necessarily into a lot of the other ways that you might want to communicate so they're not making youtube videos or even necessarily watching them like they're not on whatsapp they're not posting a lot on social media you don't have that kind of interaction so it's been really nice to know that while I've been doing this, even though I haven't really spoken to anybody directly, um, it's been really nice to know that it's also been happening and kind of get a little bit of that online community as well. So that's been really nice. Um, speaking of lowering the barrier to entry, editing isn't that hard. I just, I'm going to say it, I just, editing isn't that hard. I watched somebody's behind the scenes video and I, I decided I'm not going to name them. And it really put me off and it made me feel really bad and think that I couldn't ever make a project uh, video or anything because they were talking about re-recording audio and posing up shots and how if they just did something it took five minutes and then if they needed to, um, to pose it for a video it took half an hour or something like that and that every stage of the process became that much longer and it was really off-putting but... In the same way as you can watch Bernadette Banner hand stitch a hem for hours and hours and hours, paying attention to which direction her stitches are slanting and using linen thread that she's waxed herself. Um, and then you can also see Rachel Maxi go like, yeah, I just like, I figured the fabric wouldn't fray, so I didn't hem it, or like I kind of ran out of time, so I just stuck it with glue. Like, obviously, there's that range. And I think that it's important to remember that that range exists in very many creative things. And that includes editing. So if you want to sit and re-record the audio, if you want to record a voiceover, if you want to do whatever weird magic TikTok editing that people were doing, where they, like, hit a wall and then they turn into ice cubes or whatever, I'm sure that takes a lot longer. But this style of editing, this kind of vlog editing... Um, it doesn't take that long and it wasn't that hard. Uh, and I'm just using whatever rubbishy software I managed to find online for free. Um, it's like an open source one. It's, I think it's Open Shop Video Editor. I downloaded a couple of sample clips of music and just used one. And that's fine. It, as far as editing goes, it takes about the amount of time it takes to watch the video. Plus maybe half. Um, because I posted something online as well on um, on Reddit about how about uh, crafters and them saying like that's all we have time for, and someone made the point of just like it takes so long to edit a video, it's it takes hours to produce a minute of footage, and like that's just not true. Like for this style, it's not true. Maybe for some people it is, but for my experience, it's not. So if you watch this and think, damn, I really want to make. A vlog. I want to be as cool as her. I want to. I want to make a vlog where I'm doing Tour de Fleece next year. I want to. I want to film my projects and and do that. You can, you can. I believe in you. You do whatever chaotic level of editing that you want to, and very much like the first wonky scarf that you knit is wonky and lumpy and the tension's all wrong. Like, the first video you put up might not be edited very well, but I don't know. If you want to 
if you want to invest to make it better and if you want to continue to improve things and challenge and whatever then you can and if you don't want to you just you don't have to my mum and grandma exclusively made blanket squares the entire time they made garter stitch squares for like their whole lives and never got more adventurous than that um so if you never want to do an edited video you don't have to and i'm telling this to my past self that also thought that i had to go and do a million miles of editing so i am beginning to ramble um oh the thing that we've done is that i can't estimate <laughs> and this was a known fact and i don't know why i didn't think that it was gonna be uh any different here for like estimating how long it would take me to spin a single project of anything how many meters you'd get how much like when I was separating out the red and black to have them into the same skein what the proportions would look like oh gosh I'm so terrible at it I'm so bad it's a long-running joke between me and Bursty and it's so bad that okay like is this a she calls it a bestimation when someone has pretended when someone has made an estimation and it's really bad and it's just really far out and it's like project that was uh, estimated to take one day has in fact taken five years and you're like oh this is a bestimation this is how you estimate um yeah how long it takes to spin yarn how much yarn you can spin in a day what what um meterage you're gonna get out of something how to make the bobbins match estimation skills of exactly zero percent <laughs> <laughs> and yeah I've been incredibly my yarn might not be consistent but my ability to estimate how long it'll take me to spin it is <laughs> so I am beginning to ramble I think um, it's time to wrap this up I'm thinking of doing some more videos I'm thinking of doing some project vlogs because editing isn't that hard even if some people on the internet will tell you that it will take your whole life um and yeah you fit a lot of rubles in a dead rat if you really try and i guess i might catch you later <laughs>